Hello students, this is Professor Ashish T. Patil from Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Autonomous Kolhapur. We are in the second unit of total quality management that is planning for quality. Last time we have seen the concepts of quality policy statements, quality objectives and the attributes which are actually required by any specific leader to achieve the quality culture. In that context, today we will see different kind of leadership styles which are actually required for creating the quality culture in actual organization. So, the various kind of leadership styles which are actually required in organization for achieving the total quality culture are the first one is directing style of leadership, second one is consultative style of leadership, third one is participative style of leadership and the last one is delegating style of leadership. Let us see one by one what exactly these leadership styles mean. The first one is directing style of leadership. Now, this leadership is kind of having autocratic nature. That means, here all the decisions are taken by leader and there is very little scope to the employees or the people who are working under that specific leader. There is very little scope to provide the feedback. This particular situation will be arised in situation where leader will be having more knowledge of that specific situation. So, here the leader takes all the decisions unilaterally and based on these decisions all the people will work. Next is conciliative style of leadership. Now, this kind of leadership is used when leader seeks to have input from all those people who are working under him or her. So, in that way the leader tries to encourage the people to participate in decision making or in actual processes. Leader tries to seek the advice, suggestions and inputs from all those people who are working under him or her and the leader will ultimately take the decision final decision based on the suggestions or advice received from all the employees. So, ultimately the decision making will remain with the leader itself. Leader will collect the advice, the suggestions or feedbacks, but based on all those suggestions, the ultimate decision making will be from leader only. Next is participative style of leadership. Now, this typical leadership as the name suggests, here leader tries to assign the work to all the employees. He or she will try to provide all the guidance during the actual work situation and ultimately makes the decision based on the conclusions re received from all those employees working on the task. So, Previously in conciliative style of leadership, we have seen that leader ultimate decision is from leader only. But here unlike the conciliative style of leadership, uh, in specific this situation, leader is more likely to take the word, ultimate word from employees themselves or the word from the work which is received from the employee and based on that the final decision is taken. So, ultimate decision is from the word or work of the employees. Last one is delegating style of leadership. Now, here leader essentially tells the employee or team what exactly required to be done, what are the various responsibilities and accordingly the responsibilities will be assigned to all the people then all the individuals or team are provided with authority as well as responsibility. Now, as the worker will be having authority as well as responsibility, the worker or the team member will complete entire task by their own 
and they will take very less input from the leader. So, here the leader's role will be of a kind of observing person as he or she has given authority as well as responsibility for completion of the task and ultimately if required then only leader will participate. So, here as the authority as well as responsibility is given to the team member, the entire work should be carried out by the people who are delegates of that leader. So, based on the situation, all these four different styles can be utilized and it depends on leader, which kind of leadership styles he or she should use. Then next, what we will see is the concept of quality council. What exactly this quality council means? Now, quality council is a team. Basically, it comprises of different team members, right? From the CEO to all the senior managers who are basically from various departments and this particular team will take overall or will give overall direction to all the people for achieving the total quality culture. Now, basically this team is formed in specific organization and with the objective that they should build the quality as well as the quality culture. So, in a nutshell what you can say about quality council is it will help to build the quality into the culture of the organization. Now, who are all the team members of the quality council? The first one is chief executive officer, then senior manager. Uh, from managers from various functional areas, say from design, marketing, finance, production and quality. Now, you may ask that uh, why these people from marketing or finance may require. Now, let us take example of marketing. Now, marketing persons will be having uh, the idea of other products also from those who are in similar kind of product manufacturing. Now, marketing people will say based on their experience that uh, our product will be having say some more cost uh, and you should utilize the concepts of say value engineering and with maintaining the same function of the product and you should reduce the cost and that is why our uh, uh, people are losing the orders from the market. Now, such kind of feedback will be definitely helpful to design people to design product in that way and accordingly production people will pro produce the product and quality people will uh, establish the quality parameters which should be tested in the overall production line. Then the next member who is involved in this quality council is quality council coordinator or you can call him or her as consultant also. Now, he or she will be in a continuously in a position to provide the guidance to all those team members who are involved in quality council. Now, what are the various objectives of quality council? First and foremost objective is to raise the quality consciousness in the organization through seminars, study tours and using other forms of promotions. Now, especially in organizations, some specific days are meant for gathering various people from various departments some seminars are arranged for on different topics, some study tours also to various organizations are arranged and you can use some other forms of promotions also to ensure the effective functioning of organization on the quality statement and plan. So, you know that we have decided some quality policy statements in first unit we have seen this concept of quality policy statements. So, the role of this quality council is to ensure the effective functioning of organization based on these quality policy statements or the plan which they have decided. Next objective is to encourage the basic and applied R&D in the field of quality and dissemination of its results to the organization. What quality Council expect is that there should be 
continuous improvement in the product and for that research and development department plays very important role because this R&D department itself tries to have continuous improvement in the product functions or the service functions and based on that those changes will be incorporated in the product or services. Next objective is to raise the level of training of personnel engaged in quality activities including assessors and trainees. Now, the training is essential to all those people because you are expecting continuous improvement. So, whatever research and development department efforts in bringing those changes in the product, those should be communicated to all those people who are involved in actual production of the goods and services. So, for that reason a training is required. Again, based on the trainees understanding the assessor should be in a position to check whether they have understood all the concepts thoroughly and for that reason training is also required to assessors because every human being has different tendency of understanding. So, assessor should be in a position to check out whether the employee has trained from all the directions. And the last objective of quality council is to facilitate upgradation of testing and calibration facilities and laboratories as well as to encourage the overall quality of the organization. Now, here we can see the actual structure of quality council as we can see the topmost person is chief executive officer and under him there are various people from various departments say senior managers who had specific functions may be from marketing, service, then finance, production, quality and so on. Now, you may ask that why a person from service department is required. Now, one example just you can see that for example, if you take a sugar factory, sugar production. Now, in sugar factory, uh, it is a continuous operating organization rather continuous production system what you can say where once a sugar gets started producing it will work continuously. Now, because of this continuous working the in between instruments for example, uh, there are some pumps, there are some gear boxes which are pumping different kind of solutions which are there in sugar manufacturing process. It may be a sugar syrup, it may be sugar cane juice, it may be magma molasses which are required to be pumped from one stage to another stage. Now, if some pump gets failed in operation, a service personnel requires to go on that site and the site conditions are very poor many a times because there may be some leakages and because of that leakage you cannot properly go over there, you cannot properly remove the pump or remove the coupling because the conditions are hot, the material is very viscous. Now, if under such situation if there is not a proper uh, technique by which you can remove under such situations uh, say for example, coupling from that assembly then a service to whom this service personnel will tell this particular problem and this is a typical quality problem because if the fitment of the assembly is of quality nature then obviously the it can be removed easily. Now, under such situations such problems should be communicated under this uh, particular quality council and such uh, solutions to such problems are found out in this quality council and accordingly that culture or say the process improvement teams that means uh, after corporate quality council senior members there is a level that is quality sub council division 1, division 2 and division 3 so on. These people will have communication with process improvement teams and other project improvement teams to incorporate the changes and such situations will be communicated. So, people from all the sections though not from say only not uh, 
people from production, quality or say uh, design, these are the part of the quality council. Along with that, people from marketing, service, finance and other sections are also part of this quality council. So, this is a typical structure of quality council. Now, let us pause the video and try to answer this question. I hope you have gone through this question and tried to answer this question. So, with this we will stop today. In our next session, we will see the concept of strategic planning which is actually required to bring the quality culture. Thank you.